Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. In this episode, we stop by Airflow Performance to learn how mechanical fuel injection works in aircraft. Coming up right now. A quick stop in Spartanburg, South Carolina to visit Airflow Performance and give you a quick shop tour. Uh, Don, go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do here. All right. Hi, I'm Don Rivera and I'm the owner of Airflow Performance along with four other guys that work here for me. Um, we're in our uh, lock wire room here, so you'll see some units that are, have been calibrated and are, are uh, either in the process of being lock wired and uh, from that point they're going to get boxed up and sent out to their customers. So here's some kits that are ready to go to like homing for the Thunderbolt engines. These are, this is an FM200 fuel control. Uh, not lock wired yet, but we're kind of getting everything assembled. But this is for an engine that, that'll make anywhere from 180 to 300 horsepower because we use this throttle body on. Um, so you'll see in the kit here, there's flow dividers, nozzles, the fittings, the nozzle lines, the adapter that bolts on the engine to match up the, the flange on our fuel control. And then another different kit here, here's, this is an FM150, which is very similar to a, a Bendix RSA5 fuel control. It's the same size flanges, uh, same length. But, of course, our Venturi design is different and the regulator section is a little different than a Bendix unit. But this, this throttle body is used on engines that run 150 to 260 horse. So you, you sell a kit, is this essentially what comes in each kit? The body, the gaskets? The right. In a, in a kit you get the fuel control flow divider, nozzles, lines, uh, the gaskets, Sometimes there's fuel pumps with it. Sometimes there's electric pumps. Um, depending on the application, there could be a different adapters, elbows, um, bracket kits for the throttle and mixture control cables. So it just depends on what the customer orders, how we kit the, the parts up. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and find new podcasts on iTunes and Google Play. All right, you just give us a quick tour of the internals of what we just looked at on that throttle body there. So this is an R, these are the parts in an RSA-5. And some of the main components are the Venturi, this is the fuel diaphragm. Okay. This is the air diaphragm. So this diaphragm gets the signal from this Venturi and that applies a force to this diaphragm. And this diaphragm has fuel pressure on one side and the metered fuel, which is downstream of this main, this is the main jet that's in a Bendix unit. So this diaphragm has the pressure drop across the main jet applied to it across its diaphragm and the little servo seat that the ball sits into is this piece. So that controls the pressure drop across this jet. So what happens in how it works is the air diaphragm puts a signal or the Venturi puts a signal on this diaphragm and these two are connected together like that. And you say signal meaning like a certain amount of pressure? Pressure, right. Okay. It's a pressure because of when the air flows through the Venturi, you create a low pressure at the choke of the Venturi, which is the smallest part. And, you, and these four tubes sense the impact pressure, which is static pressure, the air, the ram pressure coming in. So those two pressures are applied across this diaphragm, which create a force that pulls on this regulator stem okay and that basically pulls this ball out of this seat which then lets fuel flow through the jet 
right? And when okay. fuel flows through the jet, you get a pressure drop across the jet, which is applied across this diaphragm. And so that opposes this force. So what happens is you put a force on the air diaphragm, the fuel diaphragm opens the valve, lets fuel flow through the jet, and then it creates a force that balances the air diaphragm force. And so as flow, as airflow increases, that keeps happening and it creates a proportional fuel flow to airflow curve. So that's in simplicity in you know simplistic terms that's right. how it works right okay it's 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 pretty simple now there's there's some springs and things inside there that we can adjust the curve with yeah, like down over some of that little there. spring there adjusts the lower part of the curve um, some of these parts here are for the mixture control these parts are for the mixture control this is the idle valve for it of course, the main jet, the servo seat. Um, these are the injector nozzles that go in the engine. Trying to get too much in focus there. Right. So injector nozzles, and these nozzles um, have an insert in them. This is actually the fuel restrictor that divides the flow to each cylinder at power and there's a there's a chamber in between here that lets air in and mixes with the fuel and that's what's discharged in if you're finding value in this video hit the like button on this video and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like airworks kit plane parts acme aero edge performance engines and Viking aircraft engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. And here's a special offer from Kit Plane Parts. Free shipping. Use the code MAYEXPERIMENTAL. All right, so one of the questions I have comparing right. a carburetor to a fuel injection, especially a mechanical injection system, is why is there no need for carburetor heat? Okay, so with a carburetor, you have a Venturi, but you also have what's called a discharge tube that sticks out into the airstream at the choke of the Venturi. And the discharge tube in the carburetor is connected to the float bowl. And the main jet's in the bottom of the float bowl. So as air flows through the Venturi, the low pressure pulls the fuel out of the float bowl and it discharges it right into the middle of Venturi. So that's a high velocity area. The fuel comes out. It um, evaporates or it takes heat out of the air when Super it evaporates. Cools. Super cool. It cools the air. If there's liquid or if there's water in the air, it could turn the water droplets into ice and then it ices the, the butterfly valve below it because that's the first thing it hits. Okay. In, in a fuel injection system, there's no fuel that's discharged into the Venturi. So all the fuel is discharged by these nozzles right at the intake valve. So two things happen. You don't have any evaporation of the fuel in the choke of the Venturi, so it never gets cold enough to make ice. Okay. And number two, since the fuel is discharged at the right near the intake valve, there's all kinds of heat there. So when the fuel comes out, it hits the back of that valve and just evaporates and all that heat is there and, it, and then the valve opens and pulls the fuel into the combustion chamber. More of chamber. an instant atomization yeah, where so it you don't to be have, Right, and you don't, so you don't have the icing issue. Okay. Now the only icing issue you would have with fuel injection is if you were flying through freezing rain or, or ice or something, snow, and you blocked these tubes up okay. with ice. Gotcha. That, that would not be good and so that's why for a plane that has is IFR rated you got to have alternate air so that you can pull if you're flying through some type of weather where there's freezing rain or something you can close off the, the air inlet you could be icing up your air filter mm. and then you pull you can pull air in from inside the engine compartment and and not have any issues with so also then does this not have a, a butterfly valve that uh what type of valve it, does it, it use? It has a butterfly valve that controls the air okay. into the engine. So, but being the fuel, but there's no, but there's no fuel, where the where the 
air goes across the butterfly valve, there's no fuel. And okay. there's no fuel in the intake manifold. It's all up at the cylinder heads. I see. So here's, this shows um, some of the parts in, in an FM150 fuel control. You can see the throttle body assembly. Uh, this is what's called the center body assembly. It separates the air from the fuel. There's a seal in here that keeps the fuel from migrating to the air side of the uh, center body. And then the fuel diaphragm and the air diaphragm. And then the regulator body, the valves go in these holes here and the mixture control goes in there. that puts fuel into this fuel control and then this device actually pulls air through it like the engine would and we measure the amount of air going through it and then measure the fuel flow output which comes out of this hose here to make sure that the unit flows the correct amount of air for the right amount of or flows the correct amount of fuel for the right amount of air that's going through it and that's okay. how we, we actually run Everything we calibrate, overhaul, new part, get runs on this bench when we get all through. And then it tells us that the whole thing's working correctly so, so as what, a unit. So what are the lines you have hooked up to it right now? Is that... Uh, so this is the fuel input here. So it would be like from the fu engine driven fuel pump. Is that... This is what we call the metered fuel, which is the fuel that this thing sends to the engine based on how much air is going through it. Now, are you actually using fuel for the test or some other type of fluid? We use a test fluid. It's not gasoline. Okay. It has to have the correct specific gravity for our, make our flow meters be accurate. Okay. So, so at this point, are you testing uh, just flow through jetting? You're not testing air flow at this point? Well, what we're doing right now is we've already calibrated the unit. We've already made all the adjustments internally. Okay. And so now we're actually gonna, we're flowing air through here and seeing if the fuel flow output is correct for the amount of airflow. Okay, so you're you're taking the air from, you're sucking it from the bottom there. Right, the air, it. I got the you. Air's, it's like there's the vacuum pumps in here, suck air through, we measure the airflow on this manometer here. Okay. All right, what we had was we have calibrated Venturis that we, put on this machine and generate these curves which tell us if we want say 800 pounds of air we select orifice 5 and we set the incline here to 71 percent and then that's the equivalent of of well let's see where's I at here 800 pounds of air we set the incline to 39 percent on orifice 5 and that's the equivalent of 800 pounds of air flowing through this unit so what we do is we set increments of airflow through here and then measure the fuel flow on the flow bench okay. yeah. and there's there's flow limits that like combing puts out, it tells us at a certain airflow, the fuel flow needs to be in a certain range. And those are the fuel flow limits. So basically all the units that we calibrate are based on Lycoming flow limit. This is the fuel flow here, right? On this flow meter. And that's idle flow, right? So now when you open the throttle, you see the fuel flow is increasing. Mm -hmm. And now when I eat, start the air box to start running air through this thing. As I This is how you calibrate, but what are you what are you actually turning or adjusting to calibrate 
that flow internally. That so there's adjustments inside the regulator here that we adjust to change the bottom end of the curve. There's springs in there we can change to change the fuel curve. There's adjustments to change the top end of the curve. Okay. Of course, there's a main jet in the unit. One of the biggest questions that I hear, and just me personally, uh, was curious about mechanical fuel injection systems, is what you hear on the ramp when people are trying to start fuel injected aircraft, especially hot starts. So what could help that situation? Probably the biggest thing that affects hot starts is the installation. So minimize fuel boiling, you want the least amount of fuel volume firewall forward. And that's where you would start with cleaning up the installation. So basically what the customer would do, he's gonna have to mount the fuel injection or the fuel control unit on the engine. And then the flow divider gets mounted on the engine. There's like four different ways it can be mounted. It can be mounted upside down. It can be mounted right side up. It can be mounted on top of the engine over the middle of it like that. So depending on the application or his cowling clearance, you'll have to mount this uh, flow divider on the bracket. There's a hardware kit that's provided that gives them all the screws and hardware that mounts the flow divider to the bracket and the bracket to the engine. He will get all of the fittings that go with it, the nozzle line fittings, the plugs to plug the extra ports in the flow divider. Um, he'll get the fitting that hooks his beater line up to it. He'll have to install those in the correct place because we don't know where they need to go depending on the application. He, you know, he's got eight choices where to put those. Um, then he'll have to mount his nozzle, install his nozzles. The nozzles go into the engine. There's ports in the top of the cylinder heads to install the injector nozzles. And then when he gets that installed, he'll have to install the nozzle lines. And basically there's a, um, there's, there's a hardware kit for that that has the instructions inside that show the routing of the lines okay. and where they need to be clamped. <clears throat> now, is this kit assuming they already have some type of mechanical fuel injection you're swapping to yours? Or if somebody wants to swap from a carburetor system, Either do you way, sell the yes. intake runners and everything? Well, if it's a carbureted engine, it's basically you take the carburetor off, bolt the fuel injection on. Okay, so you don't so have to replace intake runners no, and so forth. Okay. No, a, a carbureted engine is compatible with fuel injection. He would need a higher pressure fuel pump on the engine. Okay. Which we can also provide in the kit if he doesn't have one. And the injectors, and would you have to drill into the, in, install the injectors? Most, most cylinders have ports already, already there. in there, okay. right? So it's just a matter of taking plugs out and putting the nozzles in the ports. Okay. $2,500 to $4,500 is the typical range of what the injection is. And now is this all for experimental or is that for certified? No, it's all experimental. All experimental. For more information on airflow performance and our sponsors, check out the links in the description below. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.